I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Anvil Hawk, and we're starting right now. Anvil Aerospace, all systems online. Thank you so much to all the support from patrons and channel members. Welcome to a Star Citizen's Buyer's Guide. This is Subliminal here, and today we'll be discussing the features, functions, and benefits of the Anvil Hawk. We'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats to similar ships, review pros and cons, and I'll give you my thoughts on the Anvil Hawk. If you haven't seen it, my loadout guide for the Anvil Hawk can be found here and on the end screen. I go live on Twitch just before every YouTube release. Come and hang out. Enough with the formalities, let's get to it. Initially developed as a dogfighter and ground attack vehicle in 2937, the Anvil Hawk saw only limited operations while in UEEN service. In response to this, Anvil developed a civilian model aimed at the bounty hunter market in 2940. The new model added a selection of EMP weaponry and a containment pod capable of carrying a passenger or prisoner. Anvil Aerospace is a human spacecraft manufacturing corporation founded in 2772 that produces both military and civilian crafts. The F-7 Hornet and the F-8 Lightning are among the Anvil spacecraft currently produced for all branches of the United Empire of Earth military. Since the foundation of the company, all final designs of spacecrafts must be approved by the CEO. They are headquartered on Terra. As of today, the Hawk is not available for sale or upgrade on the Pledge Store standalone, but when it does, it sells for $100 and for a very limited time. However, it is available today in the new Birds of Prey pack for $670 with both Talons and the Prowler and in the popular Scoundrel Pack for $695 with the ship shown here. And the Hawk is available for purchasing game for almost 1.3 million Alpha UEC. Now that you know a little bit more about the Anvil Hawk, let's take a tour. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. Initially, the Hawk doesn't look much like a bird when you first look at it. On the tip of the nose, we have standard sensors found on spacecrafts in Star Citizen. Underneath that, we have a nice viewport to the cockpit. Underneath that, we have two size one hardpoints. FYI, this is not the stock loadout. Just behind the chicken leg, we have a size two weapon hardpoint. Up on top, above the wing, we have another size two hardpoint on each side. From the side, we can see it certainly does have a bird look to it. Around the rear, we have access to the prisoner pod. Tucked away over here, we have the main thrusters. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Let's take a closer look at the prisoner pod. You can actually place yourself inside. And you even have the ability to log out. Let's climb inside. Similar to a lot of Anvil ships, the cockpit extends the pilot seat down to pick up the pilot. Inside, we have the now standard building blocks UI HUD. Below this, we have enunciator panels. And below those, we have four MFDs and a 3D radar. The Hawk does have an ejection feature. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I've selected 10 ships, a lot of light fighters, some bounty hunting, and some popular EMP ships. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The Anvil Hawk weighs in at exactly 40,000 kilograms and takes third place. It fits in at 17 meters in length and takes fourth place. It holds zero SCU of cargo as well as most of the ships on this list. It has a max crew size of one, again, like most ships compared. It carries 583 quantum fuel units. Only the Cuddy Blue and Sentinel have more than this. It cruises by with an SCM speed of 225 meters per second and takes first place. It blazes by with a max speed of 1315 and takes third place, just eight meters per second behind first. 
It has a maximum pitch rate of 75 degrees per second and takes first place. It has a maximum yaw rate of 80 degrees per second and takes first again. Surprisingly though, it has a maximum roll rate of 135 degrees per second and takes fifth place. It has a total hull HP of 7200 and takes fifth place again. It has a physical armor damage reduction of 4% and ties in third place. It has an energy armor damage reduction of 10% and ties in second place with six other ships compared. It has an EM, IR, and CS reduction of 0%. The only ship on this list with stealth reductions is the Cartuero. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of over 1900 and takes third place. The Hawk does not have a turret, nor does it have missiles. However, the Anvil Hawk is available for sale in game for just under 1.3 million off of UEC and takes the sixth spot. I'm excited to announce a new art series, Vessels of the Verse. This will be the first of many designs that will be released alongside buyer's guides and loadout guides. They will be available on displayed in 48 hours, on the merch store in 24 hours, desktop wallpapers are available right now to Twitch subs, patrons, and YouTube channel members, and mobile wallpapers are available for free via link in the description. All right, let's weigh some of the pros and cons. I would say as far as metrics are concerned, it's small, and when in flight mode, its front cross section isn't terrible. It has a fast SCM speed, which is great for combat. It has a very fast max speed for outrunning and catching enemies. With four size twos and two size one hardpoints, it has a high damage potential. It's very nimble in regards to pitch and yaw. It has excellent acceleration. This is great considering its short range of fire. It has an EMP, and although it's a claustrophobic nightmare, you can log out in the prisoner pod. For cons, I'd say it's a glass cannon. It cannot sustain much damage. It is a ship that requires skill and situational awareness to take advantage of it. Unfortunately, losing a wing means you lose a gun, and it isn't hard to do so. And this wouldn't be that big of a deal with such a high damage potential, but considering the next con, I think it's worth mentioning that it doesn't have missiles. And my biggest gripe, the weak EMP. So what are my thoughts? The Hawk is a very fast, very quick, very nimble light fighter with a high damage potential. What more can you ask from a light fighter? On paper, it's great. Sure, it can't take much of a beating, but in the right hands, it can be deadly. The problem is, in the right hands, an arrow or gladius can be deadly as well. And I think those require less skill to achieve that goal. But subliminal, you're forgetting about the EMP. What EMP? This one? Recently, the EMP was nerfed, and in standard nerf fashion, they don't just nerf it, they nerf it into uselessness. The Hawk is another ship that I like, but don't love. I have high hopes that they will take the feedback from the community and bring the Hawk's EMP to a reasonable level. If not, we'll have to wait to see if bounty hunting will assist in its viability. Until then, the Warlock or Sentinel will be my recommendation for EMP warfare. I'm sure I just pissed off a few people, but I don't care. Feel free to rant down in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my loadout guide for the Anvil Hawk here. Don't forget, I'm live on Twitch right now. Like, right now, come and hang out. If you enjoy my channel, there are six ways to support it. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton Collection over at Displate and in the merch store. Number four, you can follow me on Twitch. I go live after almost every YouTube release. Twitch Prime subs help support the channel. Number five, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a channel member or even better, a patron. Some pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my Vessels of the Verse collection available to all patrons and channel members. If not, just sticking around to the end is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.